up, everybody? It's Karen Mahorn, contributing editor of Sci-Fi Wire, and we are coming to you straight from Whoville. I mean, New York. We're at the green carpet premiere of The Grinch. Your mean one. If Dr. Stephen Strange landed in Whoville at the, in the middle of the movie, what's the first thing he would do? Uh, he'd go and do some Christmas shopping. You've written number four, but this is the first one that got made. <laughs> exactly. I had, Was I wrong on that? No, I haven't had any movies made in, in a while, man, so it's nice to have a movie made. I think the last one was Snow Dogs, which was a while back. Wow. So, it, but what did that feel like, knowing that a lot of those words that went to the page are coming to life now? You know, it's always enjoyable, it's, and it's always good when it swings, and it's good, and it's fun, and you know, you watch people enjoy it, and you see it land, and it's a very satisfying feeling. Even if it's the simplest family stuff or sophisticated stuff, whenever you see the audience affected by what you've done, it's, it's always enjoyable. Now, what, what was it like working on The Grinch? Like, when they first came to you, this is, a, you know, you grew up with this, right? Like, um, hearing about it over, like, at Christmas time. It was sick, and, and, and one of the cool things was, uh, I've never gotten notes for music. Like people telling me, hey, what did I like? But since it was specifically for a movie, they were telling me notes and things like that, which at, at certain points felt annoying, but when it was done and I saw it in the movie, I was like, oh, that's what this was for. And to see it all with everything was like a moment. Like I knew that would happen, but I didn't think it would happen so soon to where I would be making music for a movie. And I did seven more tracks for it, and it's going to be a really cool thing. What was it like updating this classic from your childhood? Um, I mean, it was it was exciting and scary all at the same time because you're excited because we felt we had a version of the story to tell that would feel new and fresh. But it was also scary because you know how many people love this story, and I didn't want to be the guy that's like, everyone's like pointing at going like, you're the one who ruined it. <laughs> But I, I, we, we didn't do that. I think the movie has come out excellent and it was everything we wanted it to be. And, and the audiences are reacting so well and it's funny and entertaining and has a great message. What was it like working with Danny Elfman? Like, he's a legend. Nah, Danny is like, he's a, he's a geek in a good way. Like, he really knows his stuff. So open-minded and when we first met, we didn't even talk music. He had, he had a book from one of my favorite painters. I was like, how do you have that? And then he showed me he had one of the original paintings. And then I was like, oh, he did one of my album covers. Who else do you like? And we just sat all day just talking about our favorite photographers and artists and sculptors, all this type of stuff. And that's when I knew, oh, me and this guy is definitely going to get along. What is one scene that you loved working on? You know, I just love doing all the Grinch because the Grinch is, you know, doing a, a nasty character, but he's also a sympathetic character. And I love doing narrative writing, scoring in a way that I, I could tell a story in the music while we're watching the story. And that, that's kind of heaven for me. Now, Yarrow, in terms of animation, did you take any, did, did any of the actors inspire you to change or alter any of the animation? Did something that Cumberbatch might have done in the, in the booth alter some of the drawings? Oh, certainly. I think, you know, animation is a very collaborative art form, especially feature animation. It takes so many artists. You know, you've got the actors who lend their voice performance, but it's a back and forth kind of a thing. And, and I, you know, I think most people don't realize that, you know, we record the actors over, you know, a few years and, and we get, we kind of get to build the characters with them and, and they lend their performance and the animators get the, their performance and they say, oh, that was an interesting thing that they did with, you know, with the character. Let's try to do, do this with it or that with it. And, and then, the, you know, then the actors see what, what they've done. And it's, a, it's, again, it's a very collaborative, you know, a very, it's sort of like building, building a story or building, building these characters you know, over the, over the uh, length of the film. And, it's, and that's kind of the fun, unique part about this kind of an art form is, is that you have all these different artists that, that feed off of each other and, and get ideas and get inspired by each other. Now, as you're writing this, were there, did you take cues from any of the actors? Did Cameron Bats give you anything to go off of and then you rechanged it? Or were you giving the script cues? What you take cues from is, unlike writing a live action movie, you're watching the things in different stages of being drawn. 
So if something doesn't work, you're not always sure if it's the drawings or you, but you keep, you're writing to the pictures. You're not, which you wouldn't get a chance to do. It's not like you watch dailies, you know, you watch the day's filming of Robert De Niro and come back and go, you know what, he should say this instead. But in this you do. So I was trying to both stay true to Tyler and true to, okay, but there's a scene that it's in and I have to kind of lift it up in it and make it work for that. So it was like a balancing act. I never wanted to mess with Tyler's original vision. Uh, that to me, you know, when an artist creates something, it's sacred. So every time I would do anything, I'd do these changes and I'd send it to him and I would say, if you don't like it, it's totally cool. If this is too crazy, it's totally cool. And he just texts me. I would send him these long texts. It was a typical, was, our whole thing was like that. I'd send him like a two page text and he'd send me back and say, totally sick, man. Love it. And it was just like fire. Okay.